Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for the opportunity. So I want to talk about um, an Australian perspective on climate change impacts and adaptation. Uh, and we'll see it's quite a different story to, to New Zealand. Uh, so um, myself and my team of co-authors here have worked on a range of climate change um, and adaptation projects across um, mainly Southern Australia. And, and that will be the main emphasis of my presentation today. Um, when we're talking about climate change, I'm going to focus on the changes that we've already seen over the last two decades and just talk a little bit about projections for the future. Um, but, you know, the changing climate is very much a current and topical issue uh, for our pasture-based grazing systems in Southern Australia. So on the next slide, um, you can see just some of the temperature changes that have already happened. So we've seen a trend towards increasing average temperatures across Australia with about 1.4 degrees of warming um, uh, across the continent. And, and the slide on the right-hand side, or the graph on the right-hand side, just shows we're getting more of the extremes in, in recent decades. So these are the number of days in the top 1% of, of records. So we've got changes to the average temperatures, but we've also got uh, more extreme events, more heat waves that we need to adapt to. On the next slide, I'm going to look at rainfall. Uh, so this shows October to April, um, sorry, April to October rainfall, which is the main growing season uh, for pastures in Southern Australia. Uh, and this, the graph there shows um, April to October rainfall for the last 20 years, so 2000 to 2019, compared to our historical records, which go back to 1900. Uh, you can see in the dark orange colours there, um, lowest, uh, lowest on, on record uh, for this period over the last 20 years, so for large parts of northern Victoria and, and southern New South Wales, and also the southwest of Western Australia. Uh, so we've got lowest on record in a lot of regions and also decile one in quite a few of those uh, regions around there. So we've seen um, in southeastern Australia about a 12% decline in uh, rainfall over this, over this period. Um, if we looked at the um, summer rainfall, which I'm not going to put up, but that hasn't, that hasn't changed by as much. So it has held relatively constant. And I guess what we're seeing overall is a, a southward shift of our rainfall patterns, which is consistent with uh, climate change projections. Uh, on the next slide, um, just talking briefly about future projections. So, um, but I'm not going to go into it in detail, but I, I see this largely as a continuation of the trends that are already, we're already seeing. So warming will continue. Uh, that this decline, particularly in winter and spring rainfall, is very likely to continue for southern Australia. It's a bit different in the north. Um, and we'll also see more, more extremes. Uh, so increased frequency and severity of heat waves, uh, intense rainfall, um, bushfire weather risk. And we've seen a lot of these kind of events um, just in the last few years across Australia. So now on the next slide, I just want to explore a little bit what this means for pasture growth patterns. Um, and so I'm just going to take one example here, but we've looked at a whole range of different environments and, and we get very similar uh, sorts of trends. So this is a, a typical monthly average pasture growth curve simulated um, using uh, the SGS pasture model. And it's looking at a site in Northern Victoria. So about 600 millimetre annual average rainfall, winter dominant rainfall pattern a Phalaris subtraining clover pasture. Um, and you can see a pretty typical uh, sort of pasture growth pattern. I've plotted two lines on the graph. Um, one is the baseline, what I call the baseline period, which uses the measured uh, uh, meteorological data from 1986 to 2005, which is the typical baseline period that we use for uh, climate projections because it lines up with the climate science. And then I've also plotted the recent, of the last 20 years, um, which have called recent. And what you can see from this uh, is particularly in the springtime, we've got a contraction of the growing season. So our spring season's contracted uh, and the peak uh, growth rate 
uh, has declined. So very much reflecting the um, decline in winter and spring rainfall. Uh, we're running out of moisture um, earlier and so that, that growing season's declined. Um, and so that's, that's a key thing that we've already experienced and, and it's something that we predicted with climate change, um, you know, going back when we started doing this work probably 10 to 15 years ago, um, but we thought these sorts of changes might occur by 2040 or 2050, but we're already seeing these changes now. Um, on the next slide, I just want to explore a little bit about changes in variability. So we've got changes in the average, but we've also got increased interannual variability, particularly in our autumn time and our spring time. The winters are still fairly, fairly reliable, um, but in spring in particular, we've seen a lot more failed springs. Uh, so just where pastures run out of moisture much earlier, um, and so we've still had some very good springs, but we've had some very poor springs as well. Um, and so that uh, year to year variability uh, has increased. So with a, a contracting growing season and more growing uh, and more variability, um, farmers are adapting. So on the next slide, um, I just wanna briefly go through some of the adaptation options. Uh, and this comes from a, a review of the literature um, and in the paper, there's quite a bit more detail about uh, these, but I'll run through them fairly quickly. Um, so adaptation in feed base, improving soil fertility to kind of remove other limitations to growth, looking at different species, so deeper rooted species or summer active species and, and forage cropping as an opportunity to fill feed gaps. Um, livestock management, so reduced stocking rates, changing uh, lambing times and and selling times to fit with those changed seasonal conditions um, is occurring. And using genetic improvement to um, be able to turn off animals quicker. Diversification uh, is also happening. So um, spatially, people are looking at um, setting up farm businesses where they've got um, two different climates, uh, so, or, or more different climates. So as an example of that, uh, our case study farmer in, in Northern Victoria um, that where the modelling was based, he's bought properties in the hills so he can shore up his water supply. He also bought an old dairy farm uh, down in, in southwest Victoria, which has a much more reliable and climate and, and longer growing season. Uh, so it, it buffers the risk uh, associated with, with climate. Uh, that's in a, in a sheep and beef production system, is his business. We're also seeing some changes in enterprise mix. Uh, so particularly in our mixed crop livestock uh, zones, um, we're seeing in Northwestern Victoria in the Mallee where these failed springs are actually making uh, dryland cropping quite risky. So we're seeing more livestock going back into those production systems. Uh, on the next slide, um, some of the things that are happening on farms. So talking with uh, farmer groups about what's going on, people are, uh, are forward planning for longer. So carrying more fodder reserves, they're not just thinking about the next three to six months, but thinking about having fodder on hand for the next one to two years to, to deal with this climate risk. Um, farm water has become a big issue. Um, so upgrading uh, infrastructure for more storage and, and less wastage, um, sh shade and shelter for ex extreme conditions, uh, and also putting um, uh, an element of livestock trading into the businesses where stocking rate can be uh, manipulated quickly, either up to take advantage of favourable conditions or down um, under poor conditions. So there's quite a lot uh, going on already. And on my final slide, um, just to sum up some of this, so climate change is already happening. We've seen this contraction of the growing season uh, due to rainfall decline, and it's going to continue. Um, Variability and extreme events, I think, are, are key issues, um, and we need to understand more, not just about how it's going to occur from climate, but what it means for our farm businesses. Uh, and um, adaptation is, is occurring and will need to occur into the future as our climate continues to uh, warm and dry. Thanks.